Testing, 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 testing. Oh, sorry. Testing, 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 testing. Are you getting audio there? Can you hear that? Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to go check the YouTube stream and I'm going to call that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. I might just need to pull feedback? this back. I can't tell. It's fine. Uh, it's loud in here, so if people are close, they can hear us. If not, I'm not worried about it. Go check the th that and then come back whenever you can. Oh boy, what's up Edgar, CK, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're out at Elder Tree, we're kind of scrambling here. Everybody got stuck in traffic getting down here, typical Friday in Atlanta, uh, down at Elder Tree for the meet and greet with Mr. Larry himself, Jeff Lorenowitz. So we'll be out here for the next hour or so recording with him and we have got some post-its on the table got some questions come over write them down we'll have about 10 minutes for questions at the end we'll see you guys in the trap too if you guys have questions for jeff be sure to put them in there and we'll try to pick a few at the end to talk about why we'll people rotating in and out we've got columbia pictures here talking about sicario 2 with some of their stuff they've got passes for the movie and some swag there and uh yeah tim unfortunately had a business call so he had to step out so i'm kind of running the show here solo um if you are in the area, be sure to come out to Elder Tree in East Atlanta Village. Trinidad always does it up right, always with the tailgates or all of the World Cup watch parties that he does, which is what most of the conversation today will probably revolve around. I just realized this camera is way too close into my face, so give me one second to back it up. There we go. Much better. Screw the glare. Um, so, yeah. Come on out, hang out with us, write down some questions. We'll be talking World Cup, Open Cup, uh, Atlanta United as we get set for the Portland game coming up this Sunday at 4.30 at Mercedes Benz. Can't hear me? Yeah, this is a little loud. So I've got this cranked up here and trying not to get too much feedback. However you found us, if you found us on iTunes or YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell notification. So as we do more of these live shows, we'll be wanting to uh, get your feedback and so you can ask those questions if you can't be here in person. Oh, it's hot. It's hot, guys. So coming off of Open Cup, which we lost, unfortunately, and I know there was, I, I guess my biggest thing is that there's been a lot of hubbub about losing that match and so much so that some people took to Twitter and got really upset about it but overall you know we're all fans of the team fans of the game and it's one game I would personally my eye is on the league on the supporters cup or supporter shield and MLS cup overall so I don't want to get into the Open Cup too much. Yeah, that's much better, Trinidad. Can you guys hear me okay? It's not overbearing. You can still engage in all of that. <laughs> so, yeah, if anybody has any questions for Jeff, we're going to do a little conversation with him at the end. We've got Post-its here on the table. Feel free to come up, write them down, and we'll ask a few at random at the end of the day we got about an hour with him which is awesome scott how you been man <laughs> it's scott right how you been i haven't seen you since the champions league thing yeah yeah no that was a great day except yeah for, uh, except for the heat what got a few minutes you want to hang out sure. record a little bit sure. we'll pull up a seat i can move this box here and give you a mic oh we've been we kind of got scrambled here at the end to try to make this thing work. And, of course, traffic didn't work in our favor at all. So Atlanta traffic never works in anybody's it, favor, yeah, ever. It's hot, and uh, we're here. So you live in the area, or are you? I do. I was actually uh, born and raised in Atlanta. Make sure you kind of uh, get kind of close to the mic. Yeah. yeah, no, I was born and raised in Atlanta. Cool, cool. So did you come from the training grounds down here? I did. I did. So the traffic coming from Marietta is is perfect right now. So it's a good 50-minute wait yeah. in traffic. That it's, 75 it's merger yeah. is perfect. It's yeah. perfect. So do you guys uh, – so are you allowed to talk about what you do with the team at all, or are you kind uh, of – I mean, for the most part, yeah. I mean, a lot of our uh, – a majority of our duties are basically just to protect these guys, yeah. to make sure that um, not only them, but also the fans. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people think that – 
we're out here just making sure that they don't get hurt. No, we want the fans to have a great experience every time they come out and enjoy us, you know. We Absolutely. want them to be safe as well. Yeah. I always just I always tell everybody if you got that A on your chest, I'm there for you. Right. <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to be. Yeah. And this is the first one you guys have done at Elder Tree, right? Yes. This is the first one we've done. We got we're gonna have a couple. I think that there's one um, later on this month with Romario as well. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I yeah. think it's just a couple weeks from now, and that's gonna be on a Wednesday at like two o'clock in the afternoon, yes. I think. Yes. So so we'll be sure to check out Elder Tree on Twitter or Home Before Dark. We'll we'll make sure we push it as much as we can but yeah so i haven't seen you since champions league a lot's happened since then not just with atlanta united but the world cup going on yeah i mean the world cup is it, it's a fun time to be uh, to have your home office in a soccer specific facility because everybody is 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 paying attention and everybody's you know cheering at the same time writing emails so it's a really cool environment to be around so who's been? What's been your biggest surprise so far in the tournament, and who are you looking forward to seeing more out of out of the games that have been played so far? Because I think we've only got a week left in group play. So I mean, of course, you know, uh, of course, Germany getting taken down by Mexico, of yeah. course, is the yeah. big one. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm actually real surprised if you watch, uh, uh, you know, Argentina kind of losing, but with with the win today uh, with Nigeria. You know, you could have a real interesting story there. It so. really is. I think Group H has been the funnest, the most fun to watch. And, um, and, I, and I thought it would have been. Yeah, you know, absolutely. To be honest, so. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I think Argentina has been the biggest surprise for me. Mexico, I'm interested to see if that tactic plays out and is sustainable over the rest of the tournament. Because yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the uh, seismologists down in Mexico just because they're getting all this activity. But I, I think that if Mexico does it again, you it's might feel down, it all the all way Donovan's here in North fault, America. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a really interesting. I think that um, there's already been a couple dark horses that have happened. So Croatia, man, I'm really excited <laughs> to see how they play. out. Yeah. I mean, it's it's even that um, they've been playing great. I mean, they uh, I mean, even the numbers they've been putting up. Absolutely. So. Yeah, Croatia has been a big surprise for me. And then, again, Nigeria, there was a lot of questions about what that team was going to do being the youngest team in the tournament, and they showed up big today. Well, the thing is is that when you come out in um, uh, kits that are that that uh, good-looking, I mean, you kind of have to you, you have to live up to the It's the all expectation. flash and distraction. It, it's absolutely. It's the, I it's mean, the it's, Yankee stripes. Everybody's sitting there <laughs> saying, you know, I wish I had gotten it before it was sold out, and then there's a goal. So, right, you know, it's right. a distraction. Yeah. See, I was fortunate. Netherlands is my second team, and so – there's plenty of those jerseys to go around because nobody's buying it to <laughs> watch them in the World Cup, so that's super cool. Um, yeah, Croatia, I'm looking forward to seeing more out of them. A again, I'm, I'm interested to see now that we've had at least one game, I think at least two games out of several of the groups, Group H kind of closes out tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, how some of these tactics are going to translate long term and if they're sustainable because – you see the same thing in league play. You see some teams that are able to start off the season really hot, doing high press, going all out, and then by the middle of the season, they get exhausted and it's not sustainable. And with Mexico pushing that, Nigeria, or, um, yeah, being so young, is that going to be sustainable over the rest of the tournament? True, and I mean, you, have a, you, you always have this with the World Cup, is that you have a bunch of guys that they play a lot together, but they don't play as much as other teams do. I mean, Messi coming in, you know, from his juggernaut of a team and then coming to this team, it's just a different feel, different dynamic, and you gotta, you got to have more than just a World Cup behind it to, to really feel that cohesion, so... But it's been fun, and I think it will be fun to come. Uh, you know, one of the things that I look forward to is is the lead-in to the July 15th game that we have against Seattle. Yeah. Which is yeah. going to be That's huge. That's going to be awesome. We're That's gonna a catch, full day of drinking. You catch all those people that have been watching the World Cup and that are excited about whoever just won and everything else, and then they come in and get to see the amazingness that's happening in Atlanta. It's going to be spectacular. I think they're going to stay glued to it like they, you know, it's after after some events happen, you have that thing that's on TV, and it's just stagnant for an hour. You're listening to it in the background. I think people are actually going to attach to it and just become. I think it'll be a lot of fun because a lot of Mercedes-Benz, in my experience at the stadium, is there is some hanging out in between some of the moments, but one of my favorite experiences there was the open house last year where you just got to kind of roam and do your own thing and hang out because it's such an inviting place to hang out. It'll be really cool to do that for the final for the World Cup too. Oh yeah, I mean it's you know when you think about the experience, the fan experience that not only uh, Mercedes-Benz has given but Atlanta United and the access to the fans has been unreal. Uh, I mean you, uh, the, the whole organization just wants everybody to feel at home. 
You know what I mean? They want you to come in and basically be like, this is my stadium. Right. So even when even when teams are playing abroad, you're like, that. their stadium's not near as, as beautiful as ours. Right. So it's it's always been that way, and I think that it's going to continue to be that way. And I think that the World Cup's just going to be a great environment to go to watch the game in a football environment and then actually see your team play. So Right, right. Oh man! So any other? What? So you've got the um, other signing coming up in a couple weeks. Do you know what else is on the horizon as far as that fan engagement and community aspect of things? Anything else to announce? Uh, not really. Um, you know, the, mainly I just keep my goal uh, goal of protecting these guys and just kind of uh, you know it's kind of a month to month venture because you know they'll have uh, things come up like this all the time. The, these guys love to be out in the public. I mean, because the public loves us. They love them. It's a very kind of symbiotic relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So I well, really that's been one of my favorite things about the team and the front office and everybody involved from the players and the staff perspective is that it's that approach to openness and involvement and engagement is from the top down. And it's not just right. being involved with the team, but, you know, Darren is everywhere, and he's always wanting to be involved and engaging with the community, and it's know, awesome. And it's funny. I mean, Darren, um, Darren, as far as a leader in an organization, is also that way. So he's he's the type of person that will come by and say hello anytime that, it, it, you know, you don't have to be in his his daily uh, schedule for him to come by, say hello. Whenever he sees you, he's very, he's very upbeat. Right. Um, so he'll always make time for everybody. That's just who he is. And so it's... It's not even just him being a good organizational person. It's just him as a person. Right. Um, but, you know, and, and just everybody being out in this, it's one of those things that I see oftentimes where you'll have a player that will walk out of the locker room and he's got an option to kind of go the back way, but then they want to come down the line because, you know, it, it, all these players just want to ha- just be in this excitement and give back. And, you know, you have a kid that stops you and says, I want your autograph, a yeah. five-year-old. I've, I've never seen these guys turn them down. It's just that's awesome. it, they're, they're weak to that. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, they feel just as much a part of the city and the experience as anything. You know, they're really embedded in the community right. that way. Good. I'll take one of those. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. So, as always, these events are Heine- sponsored by Heineken. Great. My phone's dying, and Tim took his. So hopefully this will sustain itself for the rest of this thing. If nothing else, we're at least recording it. So coming up on the Portland match Sunday, what are your thoughts coming into the game? Full 11, Martinez seems to be healthy. Uh, I think Tata mentioned that after the Open Cup match that he should be good to go. You know, the one thing is I don't get too much into the technical stuff. Um, what I will say is is that I have a bias, of course, going into this. So I think it's going to be 10-0 uh, uh, United. <laughs> but um, I think it'll actually be a pretty good game. I think that, I think so you know, too. Portland is a pedigree. Um, it's not somebody that you should ever take lightly. No. And they've had spurts this season. So it's one of those underdogs where, you know, they haven't been as good as United, but don't sleep on them. Never. No, I feel like so much of the league is that way. Right. I think that was... I think that I would not, and I stick by, stand by Tata in that with the Open Cup. I would change nothing about the way he approached that, regardless of the outcome. I think he approached it perfectly. But you see that every team is a threat, and every team has its strengths. Otherwise, <laughs> rowdy and proud. I love it. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's anybody's game every week, so it's been fun to watch. Have you? Do you get out to the games, go to the tailgates, or anything like that often? I don't. Uh, game day, most of my uh, majority of my time is spent uh, around these guys, just yeah. making sure that everything's good with them, um, and of course, just making sure that uh, everybody's taken care of. Whether it's our supporters, whether it's visiting team supporters, you know, you always want to make sure that everybody's everybody's going to have a good time, have a good, uh, an enjoyable. Uh, you know, you can root for your team and still feel very, very safe in our in our uh, stadium. So right. it, that's my main concern. So I'm usually running around like a chicken with his head cut off during game day. <laughs> oh, man, you got to you got to take a break sometime, man. Your vacation should be just a staycation so you can actually get out to the vacation exp- experience you know, it a little bit. Sadly, vacations are one of the times where I actually stress the most because it's like I want to be there. I want to I want to be able to, you know, keep a keep a finger on the pulse of everything. Right, that's still, the way you know. it goes. I feel like more times than not, you, if you're out of the office or you take your hand off of something for more than a day or two, it feels like you've got two or three weeks to catch up on just a day of not being there. So I totally get it. Right. Um, so, so far this season, what's been your favorite game? Do you have one? Um, not really. I mean, 
I wish I could. I wish I could pay attention more to the games. But of course, my head is always on a swivel. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, but you know, it's it's always fun. You know, when we get a win and these guys are just super upbeat. Uh, so any win that we have is just kind of an awesome experience yeah. because you can really feel the energy through the locker room. You can feel it through just kind of the, the fans everywhere. It's just it, it gives you that kind of atmosphere. I just love it. Yeah. But any yeah. game, I don't care what it is. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand how Mexico can get on the Richter scale, but we can't because oh, I've been in that stadium in the bottom bowl, and it's well, unreal. I'm wondering how close the seismograph or whatever is to the stadium because I think if they get it close enough, you're going to feel it. Well, I feel like sure. they just expect it, so it's not reportable. It's yeah. not new. Here, that's it's true. it's basically like oh that's just United. They again. just have to like it's like leveling out a, a baseline on a scale, you know. Yeah, they like just the have to turn it up a little bit. The neighborhoods all the way in Cobb County and down in Henry <laughs> County are like, nah, don't call the police. That's just it. Yes, United. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate. It. I'm gonna get back to. Uh, I understand. I understand you have a responsibility. Thanks for coming on, hanging out with no me. Worries, man. I'm a sweaty mess, but thanks for coming on, man. Scott with Atlanta United, the muscles. Defending the people. Hey, Trinidad, can you hear me? So we're trying to get... Exactly. That's been my favorite phrase since we really started hanging out with you guys more and, and absolutely love everything that you do for the community and everything like that. So. Well, we enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. So make sure you're about three or four inches from the mic so it picks up. I'll make sure we got volume here. Sure. Um, so obviously, first team signing... Today with Jeff Lorenowitz, you got another one coming up in two weeks, right? Uh, next week. Is on it next Wednesday? week? Next Wednesday at two, right? Wednesday at two, uh, Romario Williams. Romario Williams, yeah. right, right. So, I mean, so, so far, awesome turnout, great Absolutely. crowd. Had, you seem to have had an awesome show out for all the World Cup watch parties. It's, it's been great. World Cup is like Christmas, like I told you earlier, <laughs> for a month long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys do watch parties for every game, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's $3 Heinekens, right? $3 Heinekens. We have a bunch of other specials going on. And, yeah. you know, we just, we provide an atmosphere for everyone to watch. Yeah, yeah. And an atmosphere for everybody that, it, no matter what the team is, that's been the exciting thing. Like you said, the love of the game, whether it's Champions League or La Liga, EPL, World Cup, yes, MLS, right. I mean, all of it. You guys have always got something going on, so much so that you guys are on European time and you're out here bright and early on those 7 Saturday mornings, on the weekends, man. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and then you guys also come out and show out in the in the gulch for tailgates, too. We have a massive tailgate. We're sponsored by Heineken, obviously. Uh, we sponsor all the food. We have um, open bar. Um, we're in the bottom half of the gulch, away from the supporters group, because we do our own thing, obviously. Right. Well, my favorite thing about it is it's kind of like a – it's it's the best way I've described it is it's a speakeasy of tailgates. Absolutely. It's kind of like you need to know somebody who knows somebody. I mean, you guys aren't hiding it in any way, but it's – like you said, you guys have your own – corner carved out and you do your own thing and not so much to, that you just do your own thing but you do the damn thing and you do we it do right. The damn thing. I mean <laughs> you guys roasted a whole pig two weeks ago. Sure did. Which was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean how long would you guys set up like a day before to roast that thing? Yeah well I, I put it on the smoker uh, at 6 p.m. the night before Yeah. and uh, it was done by what was it 4 o'clock when you got yeah, it up? Yeah yeah yeah. God man and, and that thing was picked clean by uh, the end good, of the day. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> So what else you got planned coming up for tailgates, Atlanta United events? I mean, well, aside from the signing next Wednesday, obviously. obviously. Well, we can't do this weekend, obviously. Right, right. Moment, but we will be there for the Orlando match. Right, obviously. right. Uh, we're going to do about 10 briskets. That's awesome. Open bar, beer. It's it's a great scene. Yeah. You've been there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And we're going to try to set up something to where we can get out there and record and make sure we get people in and out. Unfortunately, this is bad. i got to break the news to you live on air. I'm actually going to see my family in Texas that weekend of all weekends, so I'm going to miss what? the game. Yeah, I'm really bummed, but my girlfriend's going to meet my mom for the first time. It's a whole deal, so, yeah, I'm going to miss it, but Tim's going to be there, so good, the, good, the, good. The, the prettier half of the show will be out well, there. Well, listen, we, we love got, Texas. I yeah. have Texas roots as well. So, <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to be traveling, unfortunately, but hopefully I can make it down to the away game, and then we'll be doing regular live shows out there at the Elder Tree Tailgate no matter what. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a big scene. It was a big scene last season. Yeah. Uh, This season's even bigger. Yeah. Um, You know, we, we go out there, we do our thing, we have a good time. You know, all we ask is you bring good times with you. That's it, man. And, and there's going to be no better opportunity to do that than against Orlando, a, a full capacity game where they're opening it up to the 80,000. I think you're going oh, to yeah. have oh, yeah. a, 
a, a ton of people out there excited, ready to hang out and have some awesome food. It's going to be a good time. I yeah. recommend everyone come out for that match. So speaking of Orlando, I mean, I, it's weird because it's still a couple weeks away. Have you followed any of their inner workings lately, firing uh, Christ and all of the issues that they've had as an organization at all? I have not. i got to be honest with you, I've been preoccupied with the World Cup. <laughs> and like I said, it's my Christmas for a month. <laughs> well, well, then we'll turn the focus to the World Cup. So. Yeah. I think I've watched all but one or two of those 6 a.m. games because those are always tough. So yeah. what's been, I, I talked to Scott about it, what, who's been your biggest surprise and biggest letdown so far in the tournament? And who are you looking forward to, to seeing more out of as we go on the next month? I'd say my biggest surprise has been Croatia. Croatia Absolutely. Really, I agree really completely. Good. Uh, uh, came out of the gate strong. Finished, you know, they're finishing strong. They're already in the 16. Right. Uh, they got a good squad, obviously. Uh, Modic plays for Real Madrid, so he's he's got the pedigree. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, my biggest letdown is probably... Uh, Argentina? No, I don't want to give credit to the RGs. I love them, but, you know, they should do better. I think so. I mean, it's just... It, you can see it on the body language from the top down. and it, I mean, you see it just in Messi during the national anthem. He's got his hand on his forehead. He's got the weight of that country on his shoulders, and... Just their lack of composure and approach to it from a team and collective perspective has been more a letdown rather than individual performances. It just seems to be a lack of cohesion or identity as much as you've seen some teams that didn't really have that, like Croatia, who is sure. in there for the first time since 98, sure. in which they went on to third place, really to get a stranglehold on it. Nigeria looks awesome. Their game today. They look good today. Um, like I said, it's hard to look good against Croatia in their first match. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, but like you said, Messi, you know, it's kind of a, you know, a letdown because it's not the Messi we know. No. I mean, he's, he's always produced a lot and yeah. it seems that he's, you know, the team's just not clicking at the moment. Yeah. And, you know, not to say that they can't pull it together, but it's going to be tough for them. Right, right. So what are your thoughts on Mexico? That was one of the biggest games that happened in the first week. They come out, they take on Germany, end up pulling out the win, get that first goal somewhere around the 20th minute in the first half, and then they just kind of burned themselves out and sat <laughs> back and weathered the storm in the second half. We haven't seen them play since. What all, do you think about them going forward? All credit to Mexico. They played yeah. their hard Oh, time. absolutely. They did and, exactly uh, what they needed to do. And Germany's not bringing the same squad that they brought to the last three cups, which has been clinical football all yeah. day long. Um, but, they, you know, Germany's still in it. You can't, count, oh, you can't rule them out because they, they, they play a good game. Absolutely. Um, and you, you can't take anything away from Mexico. They, they came out. They're ready to play. They, they had them on their heels, and they, they took the victory. Yeah, yeah. So I think my prediction so far has been Spain. I think you're similar, weren't you? Oh, I'm always I always root for Spain. Yeah. Spain and U.S. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spain is like my number three. Netherlands <laughs> and U.S. are out. So I'm, I, I at least lived in Spain for a little while, so I have some sort of attachment sure, to sure, it. Yeah. But that's always the thing, like grasping at straws as to the who, what, where, and why. And it seems like you have to go back to heritage or take the Landon Donovan route of getting paid to support somebody or <laughs> based on proximity. <laughs> sure. sure. Well, my Spanish roots always help. Oh, Always root for Spain. So, you know, <laughs> just it's just Spain and U.S. Always root for. It. Unfortunately, yeah. we didn't make it, but you know, it's gonna. Be, I mean, I, I think myself, along with a lot of other people, didn't know what to think about the World Cup coming into it. Um, my battery's dying, and Tim, of course, took his phone, <laughs> so I have no charger, which is great. Um, we're at least recording it here. So. Um, well, I just completely lost my train of thought. There's Tim right there. I'm going to go grab my charger. Spain's the best team. Him. That's what you were saying. Did you say Sweden's the best <laughs> Spain's team? the best oh, team. Spain is the best team so far. I think that's my pick to win right now. Um, Tim, I need you to take this mic because I am under 10% battery, and I need to go get my charger out of my trunk. Yeah. So um, I'm going to try to right, scoop mate, under I'm going to run as well. Okay, no worries. So turn it at top and off. Tim's going to try to fly solo unless somebody wants to come up and chat with him for a few minutes while I go get my charger. Cheers. All right. Yeah, this is weird. What's up, Trinidad? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is this is kind of a wiry mess. It's an amateur hour. What happened? I don't. I don't know what anybody was talking about. No, nothing. Nothing. What are you guys? What were you guys talking about? World Cup. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, Heineken. Come douse yourselves down here at uh, Elder Tree Pub with some Heineken. Come meet Jeff Lorenowitz. Get your uh, your memorabilia signed. Come see the uh, come see the best number six in MLS. Who do you got winning? Who do you got winning World Cup? You're going for Mexico. What does that? What is that's what your heart tells you. What what does your head tell you? Nobody's really looked that dominant so far, right? I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's been, like, an, a very much welcomed level of parody this, this World Cup. You haven't seen anybody really, really show out. But there's, you have Spain that always looks like they're sloppy, sluggish, and then they win the World Cup, or they win the Euros. And then you have the same thing with France, whenever they made it to, to Euro 2016, so to the finals at least. Yeah, I, I honestly, so did they get eliminated today? The Nigeria game did not eliminate them. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Argentina has to beat Nigeria for Argentina to stay in. Got you. And then, so Arge that's, that's the best possible outcome happened today, right? For Argentina? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because yeah, if, if Nigeria. Um, yeah. Lost and Argentina was out. Yeah. So I still think they'll make it through. I don't. I hear. I hear. I saw the rumors that they're going to try and kill the, or not kill. That's a bad word to use when we're talking about a human. They're trying to uh, oust the coach, so they can bring in a, like a uh, interim manager because everybody's mad at Sampioli or what's his name? Yeah, Sampioli. He's not managing that team very well. Yeah. That team is. I feel bad for Messi. It seems like it's a team of goons surrounding him. They don't play well together. They play dirty. They don't. I don't know. They just. But now that they're the underdogs, usually you play harder. So we'll see. Yeah. Part of me, I'd love to see Messi kind of shake. I think he's like unfairly maligned for his international play. I mean, they made it to the final last last time. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I would like to see him go through just to help try and shake that stigma because I think it's a little unfair. He's the best player of my generation, at least. I. No, I agree. Yeah. I'm surprised. He does a lot more to make players better around him than, than does Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo's amazing, don't get me wrong. They're like 1A one one and 1A, one but at the same time, I mean, Messi, Messi's passing is kind of on another level. I mean, uh, you don't see, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I could go on about that for a while, but um, any surprises? Like, like, what's the biggest surprise for you so far in the World Cup? Mexico beating Germany had to just yeah. that, that was my big <laughs> I yeah. didn't expect it I wanted it but yeah I don't think me. I don't think a lot of people expected that at all I mean just just because how dominant Germany's been over the past few years and but they brought in a lot of new people a lot of yeah. a lot of young guys I, I don't think that's indicative of what Germany really is when is their next match tomorrow I think it's tomorrow yeah, yeah, yeah we have we have both games from that group going on tomorrow What's up? You gonna grab a mic? Sit down. Yeah, sure. Great. Cool. Get a little further away from the mic. I was listening for a second before my. Don't call tell me started. how to live my life. You want me to grab that one? For Big Red later on. Yeah. We yeah, don't have any questions coming in, so I've got oh, a, I've got I'm a couple gonna... stacked up already in the back of my dome, so I can't wait to fire them off. I haven't checked the trap. I know there's been a lot of people asking questions, Tim, but since my phone is doing the live stream, I haven't been able to check it out. So if you can look at it and did you I'm what sure chat people? Yeah, I'm sure some people yeah, no, have asked uh, the questions in there at the was, very least. They were saying that the video stopped working at some point. It's because the, the battery, battery oh, notification see. kept popping up, so we should be good now that I'm charging. Cool, so. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Sorry we about that. All the audio will go up on iTunes next day or two. Let's so. see. Do we have any? Let's see if we have any questions. Did you already put that in the live chat, or put that on the? Did you already tell everybody to do that? Give yeah, I did earlier on. So cool. yeah, keep those questions coming for Jeff. We should have about ten minutes at the end. What time is it now, Tim? What time is it? It's yes. four thirty. Okay, so in about twenty minutes, we'll have Jeff so, come over and yeah, we have one from Brian. Um, and it looks like that's pretty much it right now. My big thing is I've got so much stuff over here. I've got to make some room for whatever yeah, he does get ready. I did, I did do the lowest limbo I've ever done in my life to get underneath there. What's that? 
I said I had to do the lowest limbo I've ever done to get underneath this auxiliary cable. You're welcome. That's good for your back, dude. It's just a mess. I said, this is amateur hour. Like, what's going on over here with the way this is wired right now? Hashtag on brand. <laughs> on brand, indeed. So, other big surprises for you in the World Cup outside of Mexico and, and Germany? Croatia. I did not see them coming out performing near. I mean, <laughs> what, what's the good? What's the uh, reverse of the boy who cried wolf? Because because Croatia for the past twelve years has been one of those teams that looked like they would be some sort of contender for a crown and semifinals, or whatever. And finally, they looked the part. That's like reverse boy who cried wolf. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're finally showing out whenever people aren't really expecting it for them. So, I. Um, I don't know. I, we were talking about it the other day, I think in our Slack channel. I think that midfield of Modric and Rakitic is just just yeah. having the two of them in the middle right there. That, that goal Absolutely. that Modric scored was unreal. Absolutely. And then the build-up play to get to that, that yep. third goal. And then I feel so much better for Loris Karius after what Willie Caballero did yeah. at the beginning of that yeah. game. Yeah. It's, that, was, that was shameful. For shame, Lord, uh, <laughs> Willie Caballero. I think my biggest... Um, concern going forward what we'll see i think tomorrow is when they play their second match with mexico i'm interested to see if there's if their tactic is sustainable over the entirety of the cut well that's that's the problem so i, I don't know they're, they're, you're playing midweek games right right you're playing two three games a week in a week span 10 day span that is going to wear on them. They don't have. They have some young guys, but you have some of the older guys in there. I mean, Chicharito and Carlos Vela. They're not necessarily old, but they're high twenties. I don't think Chicharito's hit the thirty mark yet, but they're still both high twenties. And, and they're they, definitely riding a lot of momentum coming. He's off you that bringing first in Rafa Marquez. That guy's like fifty-five years old. Right. And I'm surprised he's not somewhere running cocaine. But <laughs> the yeah, their core. I mean, Carlos Salcedo still plays on the right back. I don't know. The pressing style is awesome. Like it's awesome to see them press on that counter attack and be so aggressive trying to get after Germany. But at the same time, yeah, I don't think that's sustainable in a tournament like this. No. It, it may be sustainable like uh, if you're playing one week, one I think game it, a week. It, so that's the interesting thing is like if they if they do it in the second week, right, and, and they get their six points, that should be more than enough for them who to do move they, Who on. do they got next? I don't know. I would have to look at the I'm schedule. I'm trying to remember who's in that group. Uh, nonetheless, they do it in their second week. They get their six points. That's more than enough to secure them moving on. You take your third match to kind of rest yourselves as you go into the the round of 16. Yeah. Uh, it's a matter of peaks and valleys, right? Speaking of valleys, I don't think anybody's at a lower one right now than Argentina. You know, we, we're talking about that. So Brian just asked in the live chat, he said, is, uh, is Croatia that good or is Argentina that bad? I don't. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah, Argentina certainly are a team that are not playing up to their potential. I, I certainly feel bad for Messi, which I've already said. I also feel bad for Aguero. I think both of those guys work their socks off. They're clean players. They're just outstanding attack players. And it's a shame. It's an absolute shame whenever you have goons out there. I mean, the fact that Otamendi didn't get a red during the last game was kind of a shame. Yeah. But at the same time, I think they beat Nigeria, and I think they go through. I think so, too. I think so. Well, you think Argentina's going to make it through? I think Argentina goes through. Because I don't think there's any doubt that Iceland's going to lose, right? I guess the question is, where does Nigeria fall in that? I, I think based on the performance yesterday by Argentina, that Nigeria team that I see saw today is more than capable of, of doling out a win if they're able to defeat Argentina mentally. Because I think so much of where Argentina went in that second half was based on their mental exhaustion. desperation exactly i see that but at the same and, time and, we're, and we're that just... could be the tipping point for them is it's if you get a young nigeria team who's coming off of a really big win today yeah to 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 ride that high and come in and essentially pull a mexico versus germany and right, just able, it's, it's, throw it's everything at them i just have a feeling sorry it's it's in my gut it's in my plums i feel that argentina are going to take it away against nigeria i just I mean, they're a team with experience evil and, usually and ability. Wins. Yeah, but whenever I guess whenever you have two two forces of good like Messi and Aguero up there, maybe it evens out the amount of evil. Maybe they <laughs> don't get through. No, it was impressive by Nigeria to be able to put two goals in like that on Iceland. Yeah, granted, um, Iceland missed a PK. True, Sigurdsson skied it. Skied the. Uh, I think I think he got the yips. Yeah, um, I don't know and. Um, yeah, so Brian says he, he thinks that Nigeria can beat Argentina, that uh, the offense isn't working well, and, and the, the, the defense is horrific. 
And then um, I think it's just a cohesion standpoint for me for Argentina. You see it from the t- and I talked to Trinidad about this a few minutes ago. It's from the top down. I mean, from absolutely. Sempaoli does not have like a grasp on the locker room, and it's it's definitely uh, them at like the rumors of him being ousted for the last game in the group stages is very damning on his definitely on his is. tenure. It definitely is because they have a great collection of talent. I don't think there's any any two ways about that. I mean, the fact that they're struggling. Great, Iceland's not a bad team. They're they're a defensive team. They got that. They did let that goal in against Aguero, and they somehow pulled one back with Finn Bogason scoring, and then and they just held the line. Yeah, and that really set the tempo for that. I think that was definitely in the Argentines' heads. Yeah. So about ten minutes away from having Jeff on, let's try to bring the focus back to Atlanta, Elder Tree, Heineken. Thanks for sponsoring. Yeah. As Thank you always. guys for having us, as always. Yeah, as always, three dollar our, our home, our home, our home base, our home pub for away games and meet and greets and all that sort of stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned it earlier. Romario is going to be out here next Wednesday at two, two to two thirty. Romario, unfortunately, Williams. our our working jobs are going to yeah, it's a little prohibit us from getting yeah. out here. Uh, but at least this is my first player signing that I've been to or meet and greet. Yeah, it's it's been tough because they're usually during the daytime. They're usually at a Publix, and they last all like 30 or minutes. Or they're super tight-lipped about it, like the Guzan at the aquarium. Yes, that wasn't a meet-and-greet, though. Oh, he just happened No, to... that was supposed to be like an intermingling. Oh. Like, he went, like, I, I believe anyway, like, they went there, and then he was on his way out, and he did some photos with people, I think. But he, like, he was with his family and all that, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's team there. I think Boca Negra and, and Guzan were there, and, and then... Uh, well, I, I, I think the thing I've enjoyed the most about it, we've talked about this on almost every show. I talked about it with Scott earlier is the presence that Atlanta United brings from the top down into the community that you all of the players feel approachable. They feel welcomed and they feel like they're a part of this community and not like they're behind this wall that you can't yeah. access. It's a marketing octopus. There's like so many tentacles coming from the front office. There are so many places. If you're talking about soccer in the streets support whenever they're at out at uh champion like doing the champions right, league right. if you're talking about them um you know coming out to meet and greets coming out and uh just they full they show on full force they're oh, right darren right. eels how many how often is he in the tailgates just walking around oh absolutely out with everybody. everybody see their digital team walking around just like yeah it's it's great to see yeah i mean seeing jillian and and dan walking around and kevin they're just they're just everyday people like us yeah. which is what's so exciting what's so exciting about the way that they've positioned these meet and greets at local restaurants local pubs in the community that i mean east atlanta village is one of the best neighborhoods in atlanta that has yeah. some sort of soccer identity or, or soccer culture around elder tree and i know there's plenty of others with fado and um Rosati's, which we went Rira to. Rira and, and then, Rira, yeah, and yeah. Hands. I mean, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, coming down here, I mean, there's no shortage of places to go and, and support the team or support any team. I mean, come down to Elder Tree for the World Cup, the the World Cup watch parties. I mean, they're happening every day. I mean, all day. There's yeah. n- there's no shame. It's as much as I hate to like, contra- or like correct people whenever they say it's five o'clock somewhere with regards to how time zones work. Um, it's five. It's always five o'clock here, right? Yeah. Come, come and and they work on European time, so they're yeah, open for at sure. seven it's, o'clock it's on GMT, in the yeah. for I mean, you come over here. It's it's already past noon, Russian yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're like China, where they have one time zone for the entire country, but yeah. It's, <laughs> the um, no, it's 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 awesome. There's a very reciprocal relationship going on, and I think it's done really well. It was done mutually, where the team got in, endeared themselves to fans, and then we support the team. The team helps support local business, right? And it's it's a beautiful thing to watch. And uh, people can call us plastic, and they call us whatever they want for being around for only a few years. But at the same time, I mean, there's nothing plastic about this. I mean, people showing up at four o'clock on a Friday in some of the worst traffic in a in the country to come and meet Jeff Lorenowitz, come to meet the best number six in the league, <laughs> Big Red, who we'll have on in just a minute for uh, for some Q and A. If you guys are watching, put some uh, put some questions in the chat for for Jeff. Yeah, unfortunately we've been kind of over in the corner letting everybody do their own thing, so even though we have sheets of paper out for people to ask questions, yeah. it's just been kind of a dud. Um, the way these things typically go is it's just hurry up and get it done. And, yeah, everybody, uh, even everybody's though we love every night. bit of it, it's it's just fly by the seat of your pants half the time. So. Everybody's got a Friday dinner to get to. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like, Which you're going on a little vacation this weekend. Yeah, taking Angie up for her birthday, going up to Blue Ridge, running a cabin for a couple days. Nice. Yeah, coming back. We're coming back early on Sunday so we can make the tailgate and go watch the game and everything. So, What are you thinking this weekend? I know we talked about it on the show Monday. This is the first time I've been able to talk about it th- without a voice box to translate my words like I did on the phone Oh, Monday. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Dan convinced me that we're going to win this kind of handily. I think their their road record's not fantastic. They're hot, though. They're a great team. I just don't think that they... they ex- I, I'm beating a dead horse. I said it Monday. I, I stand by my 1-0 one, one Atlanta win. Um, they're just not a team that expose themselves often, and, and they're a very conservative play style team. Yeah, and, and you're always you always have a threat. I don't know if Valeri's playing this weekend. Is he is he healthy? As far as I know, is he active. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't know because I gave up on my MLS fantasy draft because yeah. or team because I was so far behind. And then they have the as second. that goes, if you're not in the t- top ten, you just give up. They're the he, they have the second best number six in the league with Sebastian Blanco behind Jeff. And, I still uh, think the only thing I want is to see Nagby score a goal in that game. Yeah, Hunter Gwynn showing up in the in the trap for the first time ever. He's uh, wasn't able to make it because he has to work till seven. But Bummer. the uh, you say we really need to get a W to lift our spirits. They do. I, I would say so. I mean, I don't think our run of form has been as bad as people are like slouching okay. their shoulders about. I think that we're playing the right way. I, I mean, we're wasting some chances, but there's nothing. I, I, I'm not worried about it now. No, not at all. No, and I think I think on Sunday, I think on Sunday we're going to show out in front of a big crowd. We're yeah. going to have the 45,000 plus strong, and we're going to. I think we're going to drop three in the net on Portland. Three more under the tree, as Santa United would say. Yeah, ho- go go go. Yeah, good old Santa United. We need to have him out here one day. We do. Well, well, he'll be on the Christmas special at the end of the year. Oh, I can't wait. No, you tease. You're not supposed to be talking about that. <laughs> Some home before dark Christmas special. So the yeah, the, what, what about you? What, you, you still see zero zero? No, I'm saying one nil. I think Atlanta pulls it out, but I yeah. don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. Um, I think it'll be a great game. I think it'll be a great atmosphere. Yeah. Um, what are you expecting? For, what, are, what are you expecting lineup wise? You seeing any changes? Are you seeing Tito come in after the the Chicago match? Are you seeing him being reinserted? Oh, that's see an a four back, three back. I, I, I think we stick with the three back. I think we go back to our tried and true starting eleven, at least what it's been recently. With so three five two. Yeah, I think we stick with our three five two. Gressel still Even in the like, lineup. I, we talked about their their three losses are to have, the four back teams. Right to a four four two uh, four two three one. Like and we think, play in alternating uh, fashion. And I think it lends itself to a chess match where Atlanta can come out with a three back and then swap it up with a Tito substitution early on in the second half to then transition into the four back. Yeah, for sure. I think that's going to be. It's. I think it will be a chess match. I think that's a good word for it. But I think we get momentum. I say we score one. Joseph puts one in going into the half. Yeah. And then we pour two more on them kind of late in the game. Okay. I'd As they it. kind of play is de- in desperation. It always seems stupid to try and like get that detailed about it. Yeah. Like even yeah. even predictions. No, but prediction wise, go to get homebeforedark.com forward slash predictions. Make sure you get prediction in this week. Oh, all kinds of plugs. Go check out awaydaysfootball.com. That's football spelled the American way. F O O T B A L L. Use promo code H B the number four D for fifteen percent off. Get yourself one of those sweet, sweet mystery kits. Yeah. So haven't far- seen any out at Elder Tree. We saw some last time we came out. I, I really don't expect people to be wearing mystery kits out to an Atlanta United player signing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm okay. due for I'm I'm due for a new one. It's uh, it's yeah. I'm treating it kind of like my my me undies subscription. I think I'm dropping off me undies, and now I'm switching into away days. Get a new jersey every month. So yeah, because you you need. I don't know about you. I buy underwear like every three years. Gross. What? No. If you wash it every every time you use it, what what are you doing? Are you letting it disintegrate? No, I just sweat a lot, so I wear a couple different pairs a day. Dude, I'm a herb. I sweat probably more <laughs> than you do. I mean, just just pacing while I was on that conference call. I was I was I'm drenched. <laughs> yeah. No. Hanes all day. Oh. All right, let me see. Um, We're about 15 minutes out. I don't know if if we should interrupt Jeff, or I don't know how we should do that to have him over for the last 10 minutes or so. Just let him do his thing, man. He's meeting with fans. No, I know. So you had, who else did you have on in the 20 minutes I was gone? So I had Trinidad on um, and had Scott from Atlanta United, does a lot of the... Oh, so nice. I mean, we met him with the Champions League event that we did with Soccer in the Streets. And, Is that um, the bearded fella? Yeah. 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 I, I, I didn't, I obviously wasn't out there. I didn't get a chance to meet him, so. 
Anybody else? Uh, Columbia Pictures, Heineken? Uh, no, she's been walking around promoting Sicario 2, and I, ha I think she's at the back of the line now. That was like the most surprising preview I ever saw. It came up Sicario 2, and I was like, yeah. oh, is this straight to... Oh, it's got Josh Brolin. Oh, it's got, a, it's got Benicio Del Toro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is, this is legit. Yeah, no kidding. Like, this is happening. <laughs> uh, no Heineken folks come on with you? Oh, uh, off air. We yeah. talked a little bit. Um, yeah. Obviously, want to not give calling them, them out. Obviously, thank you for that, or thank you to them for helping put this on. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I keep this, keep the can. This is my bourbon substitute for the show. I make sure I kept the can front and center. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. since I'm trying to watch the weight lately and log the calories, I'm having to is take that a not light. Heineken light. I don't know. I think it's just right. Oh, thank God, it's light. I it didn't try it before. Light. It's like, okay. but Perfect. they don't have to put nutritional information on so the it's back. It's just alcohol. like, um, it's like. Water with beer mio squirted in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like beer mio? Yeah, that cool. mio, that mio like stevia sweetener yeah, stuff. Yeah. The, the oh, flavor. Yeah. yeah, it's like a beer flavored version of that. Yeah, just that's, that's disgusting. I, no, it's that. That would be a yeast flavored uh, mio. No, Heineken is uh, Heineken is one of my go tos if I'm gonna drink beer. Like because craft beer is so heavy. I mean, obviously you don't you drink you, craft beer is for dinner. Yeah. Craft beer is not That's for a tailgate. Beer. It's <laughs> yeah, not for, exactly. yeah, it's not for like day drink. It's yeah. not for events. It's yeah. yeah. No, Heineken is definitely my way to go anytime I'm going to have a beer. No. And, and I love and that. I love that Elder Tree has that promo too. And they have like the fantastic. most notorious uh, jingle of all time that goes in my head for the Champions League. <laughs> the Champions. <laughs> They're probably not really bad going in like me and going falsetto, but. Uh. The, the greatest five second song ever made. It's it's a hell of a lot better than Mick Ultra. <laughs> yeah, that way. I don't know. Mick Ultra has some good uh, good theme songs or good songs in their commercials. Yeah. 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 Oh God, it's so hot. What's the matter? Yeah, it is hot. So it's hot. miserable. I'm about to go up to the mountains though. Yeah, you'll be at a higher elevation. So you'll get in a hot tub. It'll be great. Go sit in a hot tub. Go hiking. I just hope you can pull up your photo thing so we can have a, a proper Jeff picture whenever he comes and sits down with us, and you'll be oh, able yeah, to yeah. don't you tinker with it. Trinidad's mucking up the place. Yeah. All right. Going to last few couple photos. Got big red Jeff. Yeah. Wonder what he feels about being if he ever even hears being called Larry. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Hey, Jeff, are you done? You good? Yeah, all right. Oh, the guy's got a Clarkston yeah. uh, soccer oh, yeah. shirt he's, he's on, got which got is Clark awesome. Clarkston soccer shirt. That's awesome. Oh yeah, he can always. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I guess we kind of count since we didn't get in line, right? This could be like our little meet and greet here. <laughs> Maybe we can each get one. Oh, that would be good. We can each do one question each. How about that? And then and then we're not holding them up too long. Okay. We got a couple in the live chat for them. Yeah. See, we're, the you're, anticipation's you're, killing me. Yeah, likewise. No, uh, what games do we got tomorrow? Germany plays, right? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm, shame, I'm just, shame, Kevin. At this a, point, I've stopped three, looking. I've, at this point, I've stopped looking at the the. There's a full schedule. three game slate. The weekend's always fun because, you, especially now with the World Cup, you've got uh, yeah, we got oh, Belgium, perfect. Tunisia, we got Korea and Mexico, and then we have Germany and Sweden. And typically, the games end right before the MLS games start, which is awesome. Right? Yeah, it's it's definitely awesome. That's why I think there's something going on like. For the final, right? We yeah, play a game yeah. after the final, The right? Seattle game. Yeah. The Seattle game, we're opening it up for a uh, watch party. What's up, fellas? You ready? Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, man. For sure. Got your seat. We even did the red mic cover. I hope that's okay. <laughs> yeah. How you How's doing, man? Good, good. How are you guys? Good. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. I'm glad oh, we could pleasure. snag you for a few. This was our informal meet and greet. We figured we'd let you do your thing and then yeah, try to snag yeah. you for a few minutes. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So, um... I don't know. We have a couple questions. I don't know where you want to start, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, can we start got a with community. In the, in the live chat um, from some folks. Let's see. We have Brian asking, do you prefer playing in the back three or four? Or with the back three or four? And how much does uh, Tata change his instructions from game to game based on that? I prefer when we play with the back four. 
Um, I think we've been successful this year with the back three yeah. slash five. But, um, you know, we played with four the other night in, in Columbus, and it just kind of felt natural. You know? Felt like going back home in a way? Yeah, in, in a way. I think it, with the three, there's a lot less space, you know, in, my, in that part of the field. So there's less movement, but with, with four in the back, it's... You can cover that. You cover that ground fine, man. Like, yeah, it's not about the covering. It's <laughs> more of the, you know... Space to move and get on the ball. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Like it that. does seem to clog up, especially up in NYC. It seemed like it was kind of hard to that move. It was things. almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that field stinks, and the whole kind of atmosphere is difficult. Yeah. But um, yeah, the other night in Columbus felt you know natural, like you said, going back home kind of. But um, so moving from the formation, my question is: I always like to. I mean. I played a little bit in high school and stuff like that, and I always like to go back to training. And not a lot really gets talked about training. And I think everybody has one or two of those drills that they absolutely loathe to do in training. Mine was, uh, what was it called, Indian sprints or whatever? You had, yeah, had yeah. Run from the back of the line uh, yeah, all the yeah, way yeah. up to you, the you front. around the field. I you haven't done one of those in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you would hope that only like eight people showed up to practice that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The line's a bit shorter. Well, I was always the fat kid, so I felt like everybody like slowed down until I was at the back of the line and then they wanted to speed up, which was just brutal. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite drills or fitness drills? Favorite least drills. favorite drills. Least yeah, favorite any. Drills. Least yeah. favorite yeah. drills. We won't tell Tata. That they, yeah, we won't say anything. Or maybe we will. Well, <laughs> usually one of the first days back after a game is a fitness day. I, I you know, I hate fitness days. Our coaches like kind of um, instead of doing one drill, it's like a bunch of different ones set up where you're jumping over cones, weaving through cones, sprinting. I mean, a fitness day is the worst day by yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't like cardio anymore? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a necessary evil. But what, 15 <laughs> years in, you still look like a spring chicken out there. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, it's, you're obviously doing the work. Well, I've hated, I've hated doing it for 15 years, so <laughs> yeah. it hasn't changed. Yeah. Has it gotten any easier being in the heat of Atlanta at all? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But we've been training a bit earlier. So I was going nice. to ask that question. Yeah. Everything seems to work around the daylight hours because of the heat and humidity yeah. around here. Yeah, we're, we're a bit earlier in the morning now, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's yeah. got to make things easier. So what's... I mean, how does Atlanta compare? So you've been here almost two years, right? I don't know when you moved down whenever you got signed, but how does this compare, at least climate-wise training, to Kevin's point? How does that compare to L.A. or to New England during the winter? Or Yeah, I, I mean, Chicago, super humid in the summer. gets hot. We would move the training up earlier as well there. L.A. is just kind of perfect. It's always nice. Even when it's hot, it's not that hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but New England, it, it was always the cold, the beginning of the year and the end of the year. Those are the most difficult ones. Yeah. Colorado is not that bad. It's dry there. It's kind of. I kind guess of it's nice. just the altitude, really, there, right? Yeah, but it's also an advantage. So yeah. When you oh, get yeah, that's a good point. You kind of, when you go to sea level, you play an away game, um, you feel great. So yeah, it's, it's that's a good true. Advantage. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's always a weird, like a weird transition going over there, like traveling. Over it's there. a tough game when you're the away team. Yeah. yeah. You just kind of see them sink around 60 minutes every game so speaking of traveling do you have a, a thing that you like to do whenever you guys are on the road i mean you've been doing it for a while now do you have sort of a tradition I mean, or a so thing? long right yeah. like any traditions at certain certain cities any certain spots, spots you like, like to go food to that you or? absolutely have to go do regardless of how bad it may be yeah there's a few places city to city on this team we have a little less freedom than i've had on other teams. oh really yeah so um you know you don't get to to get out as much I mean, there's a breakfast place in Hoboken. We stay right in Hoboken that I used to go to. Uh, a coffee place in Seattle that we would always go to. Um, but one of the best things about going on the road is you fly in. When you land, you go to the hotel. You're usually getting in around dinner time. And everybody's kind of delirious from travel. Yeah. And... Uh, for some reason, it's always so much more fun because people are kind of out of it. And it's always that last meal whenever you're exhausted. that you, yeah. It's like you appreciate it more. And you're goofing around. And yeah. it's, it's much more yeah. fun. One year in the league, 14 years in the league, it's always fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had one other question, uh, more, more on the field related. What led you to, it's from Andy Watkins, what led you to go in and break up the, the dust up against Philadelphia? I, I, I said it because it, it just happened where I was. It yeah. was almost like it came to me. If I was standing on the other side of the D, I probably would have just been watching. Um, but to be honest, when it when it kind of came towards me, I uh, 
I'm just kind of sick of having games in Mercedes Benz that just get ruined, you know? Yeah. It's like red cards or penalties or whatever it is, VAR. Um, as soon as he sent off Bedoya and the other players started going after him, it was, the ref warned him and said, stop, you know, yeah. I'm going to send you off. And the guy didn't stop, and I was thinking, like, just knock it off, you know? Like, yeah. Let's play like kind yeah. of a normal yeah. game. But once he went after him, you know, I felt like, all right, I've done enough, and he's going to do whatever he wants. Yeah, you know? yeah. That was that was probably so far the most insane. Oh, that's probably the craziest thirty seconds I've seen off of the field. Yeah, in, as long as I'm outside watching. of play. Teams that come in know that they need to bring it, right? Right. And teams come in with extra energy, and in that first fifteen minutes of the game, Philly was playing very well, and it was just it boiled over, and it boiled over instantly, and. From that point on, it was just a different game entirely. To that point, that's been one of the topics we've talked a little bit about on the show. Do you guys feel in the locker room or on the pitch that with the success that you guys have been having over the past two seasons, that you are starting to create a little bit of a target on your back within the league and you, you see people's and teams' approach differ th this year than you saw last year? No question. No question. I mean, I remember when Seattle, when they came in and, they were drawing the biggest crowds that MLS had ever seen and doing it consistently and doing it with, you know, passion and people that just enjoy watching soccer. Yeah. Much like Atlanta. And I played for the Rapids at the time. I hated Seattle. You yeah. Know? You, yeah. You're partially you're jealous of it. Partially you just don't like the front runner. You know, right. and I, I can absolutely see that with our team. Um, and it, it's natural. I think that people just don't like us because of that you know and i think that we have players that play with attitude and players that play in a certain way in a coaching staff that right. kind of brings a certain attitude to the field and that that causes it too but when you're in the league and you see other teams having the success yeah. i think they just kind of jealous of it in a way and i was that player when i was in colorado is there a way that you've found to kind of break from some of that to break from the mentality of the grind on the field or in the league? I mean, you've been in Atlanta for two years now. Things that you like to do around town or things you like to do outside of play with your family or in the city? Yeah, yeah. how are you enjoying Atlanta over the past two years? It's been good. I mean, I saw a show at the Earl here, you know, a few weeks ago. Who'd you see? I saw Kevin Morby. Don't know him. No, 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 no. no. It was a small, I mean, you know, they're all a smaller show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, my wife and I, we like to see live music. We've got two kids, so we spend time with the kids when we can. Right on. Um... Went to the aquarium recently. Uh, yeah. You know, there's not a ton of time in the afternoons is your time. The off days aren't very often. Yeah. yeah. And when you can spend time with the family, I like to do yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. So speaking of music, going to see live music, we like to have a couple of fun things. Uh, normally it's either last four or five things in your Netflix queue, but this seems to be apropos to, to what what kind of music are you listening to now everybody's got their sort of hype mix what's one song or an album or something that you've been listening to lately that that you've had on repeat like before games you mean anytime or? before game in the car i guess you do have to have kind of two different mentalities on that right yeah i try i try not to put too much emphasis on the music thing before games yeah um I, I live right near Fantasyland Records in Buckhead, and I buy CDs from them. Very cool. So I've been buying CDs, and one of the recent ones I bought, I'm a huge Talking Heads fan, and um, I bought one of their compilation albums. Nice. Uh, nice. Album. Right on. Well, I think you got somebody that's going to have to snag you away. Absolutely. We'll let you do that, and then you're right at the end of your hour. We'll catch you before you head out to at least snag a picture and get these couple of things signed. But thanks right. so much for coming on yeah, with no us, problem. man. Really appreciate it. it. Yeah. See you Sunday. Nice to <laughs> So there you guys have it. It's pretty great, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome, dude. Um, Going to wrap it up here. Be sure to check out Elder Tree. Um, as we said before, World Cup watch parties, each and every game, away games, home games. We're going to try to do live shows. We'll be here as many away games as we can. Yeah. Uh, Romario Williams signing next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, $3 Heineken's on draft. Can't say man, that enough. That's yeah. a good deal, man. That is a That's really a good, good deal. Good deal. Um, it's not like you're getting Miller Lite for $4. You're getting no. freaking Heineken. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't drink. I know, I know how good Heineken is yeah, from exactly. the, seeing the people who drink it. Exactly, exactly. I like the light version. Like I said, it's, it's, I don't feel as bad. i got to watch my calories, especially since you're going to be watching my, right. my well, calorie counter. Whenever, yeah, right. Whenever you're Dutch, you, you can't drink your calories because you're eating all that Gouda and Edom yeah. And, yeah. and Havarti and <laughs> all that good, dense, heavy dairy. 
Any other things in closing? I guess um, away days football. Check those guys out. Martin. Get yourself a mystery kit. Show us whatever you guys got. It's yeah. twenty five bucks. Use the five, the fifteen uh, percent discount code HB four D. Be sure to post those pictures whenever you get them. Show us what you got. Thank you guys for checking us out in the trap. Probably still at the office, if not getting ready to leave. It's a good way to end your day, I think. However you found us, if you found us on iTunes, be sure to rate, leave a review to hear it read aloud on the show. As always, we go live on Monday nights, depending on when Dan can be bothered it's to show most, up. Most definitely, it's going to be from 8, 8 p.m. It's going to be, our regular hour is going to be at 8 p.m. This, from this point forward until... Yeah, uh, things change. Regardless, if you want to watch us live on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get a notification whenever we do go live. Tim, find us all on Twitter. Where can they find you at? Where can they, where can they find you at? <laughs> you find me at my name. It's at T I M H E R B. Find me as well at the architect. That's at the underscore A R C. Number one, T E C T. Collectively at home before dark. That's before spelled B and the number four. For the time being, at least. Until we get that damn, until we, until that Twitter estate sale happens. That's right. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Thank you so much to Elder Tree for having us out. Um, thanks to Jeff for coming out and everything that you guys bring every week, every show to the community. Looking forward to seeing you guys Sunday at the Portland match. Until then, as always, be home before dark.